Now the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Bass, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let me begin by thanking both of you for your service to this country. Uh, we often have this uh, phrase here in Congress that we associate ourselves with the comments and questions of colleagues, but I'd like to take a moment actually to disassociate myself um, with the manner in which I believe uh, you two have been uh, treated. And, um, and I believe that your service has not been respected. Now, having said that, you know, I've talked to both of you before about a subject matter that I'm critical of, of the department. But I'm critical of the department in the context of respecting your service and the service of your officers. So uh, if you do remember me, we've had a couple of conversations about black identity extremists and uh, about that report. And I've asked uh, both of you at different times if you would look into the matter further. And I didn't actually hear back. And so I wanna ask you questions that I've asked before. Um, and we also had a meeting, uh, it was a classified meeting with, with um, your departments. And um, I'm still in search of answers. And the answers I'm in search of is that if you have identified um, who drafted the report, and way more important than the individual, the department, and what was the basis for the report. And I'd like to ask both of you to respond to that. You're talking specifically about the report regarding black identity extremists? Black identity extremists likely motivated to target law enforcement officers is the long-winded name of that report. Right, and so I, I, as to who drafted it, I don't have that information. Uh, with me, certainly. Um, I thought that the meeting that I had with, with you all and your colleagues, uh, I think it was about two hours, I thought was very constructive. I appreciate hearing your concerns. I hope you understood at least how we went about what we did. It all happened before I arrived. Uh, yes. the con that conversation has, I can tell you, prompted us to go back and take a very hard look at how we are bucketing the different categories of uh, domestic terrorism. Um, and it's, I think it's been a useful learning experience for us, and I expect we will see some changes in how we do things going oh, forward. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Rosenthal, thank you. I, I believe uh, you asked me questions about this in December when I was here, uh, and I, I have no further knowledge of it beyond what Director Ray has, but I do want to assure you that based upon what I've seen uh, of the FBI during my tenure there, uh, when they use the term extremist, the FBI is focused on violence and violations of the law, they're not focused on people who are exercising their First Amendment rights. So you know what? Um, when we did meet, I also asked both of you if you were aware of any cases. At that point, you said that you weren't. You didn't know of any investigations. But since then, you might be familiar with a case in Dallas where there was a, a young man who you know, put some, in my opinion, crazy stuff on his Facebook page, uh, but had no history of violence and wound up being incarcerated for several months and the black identity extremist document was the basis in which he was arrested. Are either of you familiar with that case? Uh, I'm not. No? How about you? I'm not familiar with it and I, uh, the, the, the FBI's report would not be the basis for prosecuting or arresting Not prosecuting, it was the basis from which they, uh, I mean they labeled him that. And, I'm not uh, familiar with it. Okay, so I would ask again, follow up, I would appreciate it because my concern that I raised to you then, and I still have that concern, is that until this report is retracted and clarification is made to thousands of police agencies around the country, that that report can be used, especially if you have, when my concern is young African American activists who might protest uh, police uh, police violence, you know, whether it's a police shooting like the one that just happened in Pittsburgh, the guy running and was shot in his back, uh, or in Sacramento, because these shootings continue to occur and they continue to be videotaped. Well, as I said, we're continuing to look at the information we used for that report and the manner in which we described it. Uh, as I also, I think, said to you back when we spoke last, uh, we have very strict guidelines about not just in this area, but in any domestic extremism situation. We only investigate when we have those three things. Remember, right. credible evidence 
of a violation of federal criminal law, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, credible evidence of violence or a threat of violence. And then third, motivated by some extreme ideology. And if we don't have those things, right. our folks are not allowed to open up an investigation. So I would, uh, in wrapping up, would ask if you, you know, would follow up. I'm encouraged to hear that it's caused, you know, maybe some reconsideration. What worries me, though, is that if that reconsideration takes place within the department is great. But those 2,000 law enforcement agencies, if there is not correction, clarification, I still worry that it could be used. And so we may, perhaps we could follow up uh, with that. Time of the gentleman has expired. Chair, recognize the gentleman.